Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Engelbard. Yes, it's another edition of Utterly Pointless Comparisons. Today I'll be looking at Konami's kinda sorta almost classic Gyrus, and I'll be comparing the versions for the Arcade and the Commodore 64. Here, go ahead and have a look at the spec differences between the Arcade hardware and the C64 while I blab on about the game for just a little bit. And actually, before I get into that, I have to apologize because this time I absolutely could not find verifiable, reliable information on the amount of colors that the arcade hardware could display on screen, its total color palette, or its maximum number of sprites. If I find this info later on, I will add it to the video description. Suffice it to say that all of those things are clearly superior in the arcade hardware when compared to the C64, which will be obvious once you see the video. Gyrus was released by Konami into the arcades in 1983, and it's basically Galaga in a tube. It's, it's a series of tubes! But with the intensity kicked up a notch. Bam! Oh yeah! Bam it again, I was I Knock it up another notch! In Gyrus, you can move 360 degrees around the edge of the screen, while enemies come in in waves from different directions as they make their way towards a centralized location, hang out there for a little bit, and then dive bomb you as the level goes on. You can also get a double shot power up just like you can in Galaga. But instead of retrieving it from a captured ship, in Gyrus you just have to shoot a special enemy that will release the power up. Gyrus is also very well known for its pulse pounding, modernized, neo classical soundtrack that comes to us courtesy of one Mr. Johann Sebastian Bach with a little help from Masahiro Inoue. Now, the arcade hardware for Gyrus was surprisingly robust for the time that it came out, featuring one, two, three, four CPUs, one of which was dedicated to sound. On top of that, it also had five, yes, five, AY sound chips. Because of all this, it was going to be pretty tough to duplicate the arcade experience at home on the contemporary hardware of the time. And in 1984, Parker Brothers, yeah, the board game company, released gyres for a number of home formats, including the Commodore 64. The Commodore 64 version of the game was really good for the time. Now, the Commodore 64 version does suffer from severely, well, flickering or flashing sprites. And why did they do this? Well, basically, the developers found a way to sort of cheat the hardware limits of the system so they could trick it into displaying more things on screen than it otherwise should have been able to. It also doesn't have the best rendition of the soundtrack. It's a little disappointing even though it's not bad. It just lacks the oomph of the arcade music. This is partially because of the instruments that they chose, and also partially because the C64 only had three sound channels. Now, I loved the C64 version of Gyrus as a kid, and it still plays great today. And I still think it was the best contemporary home version of the time that was available in its era. Now just a few quick notes on my recording methodology. I did use save states in both versions of the game. What I would do was save at the beginning of the level, and then just reload the state if I died. I did this so I could keep both games in sync as closely as possible, so you could see the same levels at the same time in the video, while limiting the number of pauses that had to be implemented. And this is about seeing the game. This is not about my gameplay. I'm not claiming to be some gyrus savant or anything like that. With that out of the way, enjoy one complete loop playthrough of both the arcade and Commodore 64 versions of Gyrus. The C64 game is at 100% size here, and the arcade version is at about 90% size. Alright, here we go! Check out that awesome arcade music. Well, awesome for 1983, anyway. You can see the flashing enemy sprites in the C64 version all over the place. You'll see the C64 sprites stop flashing when they come out of the center. As you can hear, the Commodore 64 version sounds pretty good, but clearly less powerful. 
It's missing a lot of the effects from the arcade, and also the heavy base of the arcade game. The biggest issue, I think, is it's just missing too many audio cues when certain enemies or waves appear. It's got some of them, but not all of them. The first bonus stage. Bonus stages in Gyrus are kind of like galactic dancing from Galaga. Now we're at the basic structure of the game. We're going to most of the planets. You'll have three stages with the same enemy patterns that get a little tougher, maybe a little faster each level before you reach the planet and a bonus stage. Another thing you'll see here is that if you destroy a lot of ships in the first four waves of enemies that come down, you may get an extra wave with a different pattern that you would normally see in a different level. Here we are on the C-64 at Eurectum! You can really tell that the enemies have quite a bit more animation frames in the arcade version of the game. Something else that is real apparent in this stage is that there are a lot more hazards in the arcade version than the C64 version of the game. They have the same ones, but you'll see more of the asteroids or meteors and force fields in the arcade game than you will in the C64 version. You'll also see that you get a higher bonus point reward the more waves you destroy completely in one level. One thing I'll note here also is that it seems like this trio of enemies that pops up that you'd normally get the power-up from appears a little more frequently in the arcade than the C64 one.
Now here you'll notice there's a discrepancy where the enemies actually originate from in parts of this bonus stage. So in the arcade version, the ships started at the bottom for the first time they show up, and then the top for the second. On the C64, those particular waves, 2 and 4, are reversed. I think it's really impressive for the time how quickly and smoothly the sprites move around in the arcade version of Gyrus. In this stage, we see way more enemy fire in the arcade game than we see in the C64 game. So in this stage we once again see the same basic enemy patterns, uh, but their origination points are not the same between the two versions. They start out in a different place in each one. Yeah, Jupiter doesn't look so hot on the C64, does it? I didn't point it out before, but you'll notice the sprites have sort of a software scaling effect on the arcade version, where they get a little closer and further away from the ship, especially in these bonus stages. We don't see that at all in the C64 version. You'll notice the sequence of flying into the warp takes longer on the C64 than it does in the arcade. You can really see the enemies in the middle sort of pulse and rotate more in the arcade version than the C64 one.
once more. In C64, the ship wave starts at the bottom, and in the arcade, the ship wave started at the top. final few stages are definitely the hardest in the game in both versions, but the C64 version is considerably easier than the arcade game. Again, we see a lot more enemy fire coming from Arcade Gyrus. At last, Earth. Hey, it's the place where I keep all my stuff. The final stage. Yeah, it's just the first stage, but faster with more enemy fire. And then once that's done, it loops. And you might be saying to yourself, Hey, didn't it say we were warping to Neptune at the beginning? Well, yeah, when you start the game in stage 1, you're two warps from Neptune. In stage 24, you're three warps from Neptune. And then in stage 25, you're two warps, which puts you at the same place as stage 1, which is where the game loops. Alright, well, thanks for sticking around to the end. What? You want more? Fine, twist my arm. Gyrus was designed by Yoshiki Okamoto. It was the second game that he had designed for the company, and his final one before being fired. After this little setback, he ended up at Capcom, where he worked on a bunch of little-known games that no one's ever heard of, including one called... Uh, hold on, let me look it up. Street... Fighter... 2? Now aside from those Parker Brothers releases in 1984 for the older systems, Konami also brought the game themselves to the Famicom Disk System and later to the NES under their Ultra Games label in 1988. Now this isn't really a port of the arcade game, it's more like a semi-sequel that was inspired by the arcade game. It features different enemies, more power-ups, more levels than the arcade game, it has bosses, it has more and different music, and it has a definite ending. Finally, a quick note for the emulation fans out there. If you're from the US and you want to experience the C64 version of the game properly, make sure that you get the correct region ROM, a USA version or disk image, and that you're running the emulator at 60Hz or NTSC mode. A lot of the C64 emulators today seem to default to 50Hz or PAL which can result in slower gameplay and a stretched image. 
And that will bring this video to a close, my retro gaming friends. Are you a fan of Gyrus? Would you like to see me compare other versions of the game in a future video? Don't keep these feelings bottled up. Instead, pour them out into the comments section. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.